Hey guys, welcome back. I am in a slightly different setting. As you can see, I decided to do part of today's session from the barn because I wanna show you something about a story that has been developing in my life over the last six weeks. This lady's name I think is Delilah, although I'm open to suggestions. She's feisty and I'm calling him Yoda. Here he is, this is Judy. So you might remember when I showed you the kittens after they had just been born. They didn't even look like cats. They were just these little lumps of flesh and fluff. They looked more like mice than anything. And now they've grown into kittens. But what we're seeing right now is the happy ending. There have been a lot of events that have taken place along the way. A lot of conflict and a lot of resolution. This story has had ups and downs, rising action, and denouement. And these are the things we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to break your stories into the story's different elements and talk about the different parts of story structure. So thanks for joining me for story part two as we talk about story structure. Hey there, welcome back and welcome inside. Um, I thought the easiest way to start this next little bit of work, because it's a little bit complicated, would be if I did some work as an example for you. So I'm going to use an observe story from last week that I did the fill in the blank workshop with. So this is a story about a woman who unexpectedly finds herself on a farm. She wants more than anything to make her father proud. One day she walks out into the barn and discovers that three kittens have been born. So she decides that she will be an Insta influencer and a farmer and this will surely be the way if she follows in her father's footsteps to make her father proud. But then she discovers that the animals on her farm, her kittens, have unexpectedly disappeared. So she falls into something like despair until she realizes that the mother has simply moved the kittens and that um, she's found them again. It feels better. Uh, so this is what the story looks like on the fill in the blank. And then I went ahead and converted that to prose as I asked you to do. So I'm gonna share that with you now. I'm just gonna read it aloud and you can follow along if you like on your um, screens. So here's my story about the kittens. You guys, how many times am I gonna have to say the word kitten? Okay, here we go. What next? I can go outside. What can I do outside? I'm on a farm. I could do like farming, right? I walk out to the barn and as I get closer, I hear this sound, a sound that can only be described as mewing, not meowing, mewing. There's barn cats, but they don't usually meow. And there, under a red heat lamp suspended between two bales of straw, are three brand new tufts of fur. Kittens, there's kittens, there's animals on my farm. I crawl over a bale of straw and promptly put them on Instagram so that the world can see that I am a farmer. I decide right then that every morning I will write a line of poetry and take a photograph. I will become one of those trendy lifestyle Insta influencers, farm girl. This was always where I was supposed to be. How did I not see that until now? I am a farmer. I should get a goat. My dad would be so proud. Three days later, the kittens are missing, gone. Did a raccoon run off with them? Were they tasty takeout for a family of fox? Maybe I freaked the mama out with my Instagramming. Oh my God, I murdered the kittens with Instagram. Thank God I didn't get a goat. But couldn't the mother have hidden them? Maybe. I searched the barn, tromping through manure, climbing over hay and straw bales, peering into the eaves. No kittens, no sound. I am the last living thing on this farm. And then I hear a sound one after the other, toddling on awkward legs. They push out from between the straw bales, curious about the lady with the straw-colored hair who's making a strange mewing sound. A perky tortoise shell leads the way, then a pudgy black one with a snow-white belly and a little gray puffball whose eyes are still mostly shut. Thanks, Dad. Maybe you'll make me a farmer yet.
So let's work together to identify the different elements of story in the um, in my story and uh, and start thinking about yours as well as we work through. So you should have your stories in two different formats. You can go ahead and get those ready now. You've got it once in prose and a second time in this fill in the blank. And as we move through these different elements of storytelling, sometimes it's gonna be easier to identify them in the prose format or in the fill in the blank. So let's begin with my story about these kittens. Uh, first off, exposition. This is our first storytelling element. And these are some of the things that we've talked about in uh, weeks two and three. We have a character and we have a setting. And what we also know about this particular character is her motivating characteristic. So what is the thing that she wants more than anything? So this is very easy to identify in those first couple of sentences in the fill in the blank worksheet. So this is a story about a woman who she wants, right? There we have, this is a story about a woman who unexpectedly finds herself on a farm. She wants more than anything in the world to make her father proud. So this is the exposition. We have the character of the woman, we have her unexpectedly on a farm, and we know that she is there hoping to make her father proud. This is her motivating characteristic. So why don't you go ahead and take a minute to see if you can identify the area of exposition in your story and how that might relate to character, setting, and particularly that character's motivating characteristic. What does your character want more than anything in the world? So the next element of storytelling we're gonna talk about is the inciting incident. Every story that's ever been told has an inciting incident. And this is the thing that happens immediately prior to the story beginning that makes the story possible. Or the thing that happens right at the top of the story that makes the story unfold. The thing that makes this day more special than any other day, or this day worth talking about and telling a story about. What is the thing that happens to make this day into a story? So in this particular instance of the kittens, the inciting incident is that she hears a noise. So here it is in my story. Can you find the inciting incident in your story? You can find it in the prose or on the fill in the blank worksheet. This is what happens immediately after one day blank. The next element of storytelling is action. Now this is really the bulk of the story, the meat of your story. These are the events of your story, the things that happen to your character inside your story. So we're gonna spend some time next session getting really specific about how action works, what action is and what it's not. But for now, it should be pretty easy to identify at least one action in your story. Now you can find this really easily on the fill in the blank. This is the thing that happens, so she blank. So we've got this is a play about blank, who blank, she wants blank, one day blank, our inciting incident, and then so she blank. And this is the character's first action. So what's in your fill in the blank after so she blank? And also what's in your prose? In mine, for example, she goes out, she sees the kittens and there she decides that she will write a line of poetry. She will be an Insta influencer and she will get a goat. She will make her father proud. So go ahead and take time to identify your actions, um, both in your fill in the blank and in your prose. Now, part of action is complications. 
right? A character takes an action, but then something unexpected happens. And so they have to divert their course in terms of getting what they want. So this is the next element that I wanna talk about, which is complications. And we talked a little bit about this in some of our previous work together. So see if you can identify the complication in your story. So again, on the fill in the blank, it's gonna be really easy to find. This is the piece of the fill in the blank that comes after, but then blank. So you can find it really easy on your fill in the blank and then go back to the prose and locate it there. Where are the complications in your story and what are they? The next element we're gonna talk about is climax. Now I'm sure this is a really familiar idea to you. You've probably encountered this word and this idea in some of your other classes, reading or uh, English or any kind of writing or composition class that you've taken. And this idea of climax, I like to think of it as the highest point in the narration. So this is the point at which all of the actions have been leading up to. This is when Harry Potter finally shows down against Voldemort or he who shall not be named, right? This is the forces of good battling the forces of evil. And out of this climactic interaction comes some kind of discovery or realization or turning point that allows us to go towards the conclusion of the story. So it can look, yes, like a sword fight. It can be, you know, big and dramatic and the most exciting or the scariest part of the story. Or it can sometimes be a really quiet moment in a story. It can be where the character makes a discovery, comes to a realization. So in my story, for example, about the kittens, this is the moment at which she feels that she's the last living thing on the farm. In the fill in the blank, I identified it as then, but then she feels a moment of despair. So take a moment in your fill in the blank and in your prose to discover this moment. For the fill in the blank, the climax is the piece that comes after. So she, fill in the blank, but then, complication, fill in the blank, so she, blank. What's in that second to last blank on your fill in the blank? And then where can you find that also in your prose? The last element of storytelling that we're gonna talk about today is resolution. And it is exactly what it sounds like, how a story resolves, how it flies in for its landing, how it comes to completion. You can also call it denouement. That's kind of fancy and sort of fun to say, denouement. Um, in our fill in the blank, it's really easy to find. It is the last thing you wrote after the word until fill in the blank. So what's the very last thing that you wrote? What is the ending of your story? And it should be equally easy to find in uh, your prose as well. How does your story resolve? How does it come to an ending? What is the solution to the problem that your character is facing? Um, what is the way that this complicated issue, the complications of your story, of your action, of your climax, have uh, found a way to unfold and come to a conclusion? So in my story about the kittens, the resolution of the story would be the woman, the character, seeing these three little kittens, that they, the discovery, the realization, that they haven't been eaten by a family of raccoon at all, that they are in fact, ha have just been moved by the mother. And then a little more too, there's the, the acknowledgement of her father at the end. So you get a little sense of how she's going to move forward in her life, having been through this this crucible, this story, these um, these actions and conflicts and climax around uh, this discovery and then this uh, supposed loss of these kittens. So there's a little bit at the end that's kind of extra credit. How is your character going to move forward? Do we have a sense of what the rest of their life will be like, how their story might continue to unfold?
So the way our story is going to unfold in our work together is that I want you to start thinking really carefully about what you would like to write your play about. So we've done a lot of exploration of these different wells of inspiration. We've talked about the self, we've talked about observation and imagination. We've written lots of little pieces of lots of little stories. So start thinking if any of that sparks any imagination, sparks any curiosity, what it is in our work together and the generating, there goes a cat, and ideas that we've come up with that you might like to delve further into and explore in a play. So for next time, I'd like you to think about what you want to write your play about and then do a fill in the blank worksheet for that play. And maybe if you're so inclined and you have the time and you're moved to do it, go ahead and write that play out in a prose format. Now this doesn't have to be a novel, right? You can take um, a great big play and you can give me sort of the synopsis, what those different pieces are. And this might be a really helpful tool as you continue to move forward in the writing of the play because you'll have it sort of not only in an outline in a fill in the blank version, but in something that has a little more detail. So go ahead and let your imagination run wild. Let your observation kick up and show you what it's got and really bring your whole self to this and um, think about what you'd like to write your play about and then do a fill in the blank worksheet for that play. And you can start thinking about what it might look like in prose or if you're feeling really gung ho, go ahead and write the prose version of what will ultimately become your play. Good luck and I will see you next time. Take care.